Hey singers, I'm Sarah Lieb and this is Singing TV. Together you and I, we're making singing simple. Today we're going to do an episode called The Mystery of the Diaphragm. That's right, I named the episode before I even made the episode. Mystery of the Diaphragm. And the reason um, I want to talk about this is basically because every person I've met who's ever come into this studio pretty much, I think I can go with like 100%, has said, if I say, okay, what do you know about breathing for singing? They say, well, you're supposed to use your diaphragm. I go, okay, great. This is true. Except that, first of all, the diaphragm works regardless of whether we're aware of it or not, whether we're singing or not. Um, and I say, well, what does that mean, use your diaphragm? And people have no idea. I, too, was one of those kids in choir, and somebody said, use your diaphragm. And I didn't have any idea what that meant, but I just breathed and, you know, hoped that it was right. So let's sort of break this down, break down the mystery and help you understand what the action of the diaphragm is. So, diaphragm is a muscle and it, it sits right below where the rib cage is. So if you feel on yourself, you know, here are our ribs, and feel your bottom rib in the front, and then feel they go down on the sides and the bottom and the back, right? So the front of your rib cage should be uh, higher than it is in the back. So just below there, you have this muscle called the diaphragm, and the diaphragm extends all the way around from here and there, and it sits when it's at rest, just like this. I like to think of it as almost like a jellyfish muscle. Reason being, when it's at rest, it sits like this, and when we breathe, it moves down. Regardless of whether we're breathing for singing or not, it doesn't matter. It does, it does this action. So when it moves down, it becomes a little bit kind of... Uh, convex, concave, concave, um, moves down like this. In the same way, because it moves down like that, it helps suction in air. So if I'm breathing and it goes like this, it makes air a lot easier to come into my body. Just like if I were opening the door of the studio and I opened it really quickly, it would suction in, that moving action would suction in air into the room from outside. Does this make sense? Those of you yes. on the camera, it makes sense to you, it'll make sense to the viewers, right? Okay. So. That action helps our breath to get into the body, which is great. It's why it's so easy to breathe, right? They cut the umbilical cord and you went, it wasn't like I had to teach you how to breathe. You knew from the second you were born. So that's the action that happens. But if the diaphragm moves down, what ends up happening is it's easy, if it's easy to get the breath in, what we want to do is control the breath as it leaves. The other thing, though, is because the diaphragm's tied, tried right? Tied into the nervous system, you can't feel it or control it consciously like that, right? If it's moving down, what we want to be able to do is control its movement up. If we just let our breath out, it rises up relatively quickly. What we want to have happen when we breathe out, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, using breath control and maintaining throughout, is we have to use our intercostals and our, our abdominal muscles secondarily to control that diaphragm, to keep it from rising. Because I can't say, okay, diaphragm, move a millimeter, move an inch. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't work that way. It's not like using your fingers to grab something where you can control it. So, we use these other muscles. To control the movement of the diaphragm so it rises up slowly so that we don't let our air out all at once. That's what the diaphragm does. That's hopefully going to get rid of kind of the mystery of how it works, why the heck it's there. And of course, as you should know from previous episodes, when we use those intercostals and abdominal muscles, we don't want to go tense them up really, really hard in order um, to keep the diaphragm from rising, but we do have to engage them. So it shouldn't be like, right, so that all your other muscles um, become engaged and get tense. It should just be like just enough I always blow a little bit out at the end because I always have more air than I think I'm gonna have. It should come just enough and be just controlled enough that you can keep a consistent stream of air uh, throughout the phrase. Not so that uh, you know, you're tensing up. We're not like pooping here. We're literally just breathing. So I hope that that gets rid of the mysteries of the diaphragm. Now you know where it is, how it functions, what we use it for when we breathe for singing. And I hope that helps. Thanks so much. I'm Sarah Lee. This is Singing TV. Together, you and I, we're making singing simple.